Hi, I'm the Nuclear Rabbit, and I like characters that run really fast. You have your Frenzy Barbarians, your Viker Paladins, Burst of Speed Assassins. We all know and love these, but there is one build that runs so fast her feet literally catch on fire. And that is the Blaze Sorceress. To get access to Blaze, we first need to hit level 12. But luckily, we can spec into a synergy for Blaze straight from the start by putting points into Warmth, which is something you should never do. Warmth looks really good, but it's a red herring for the early game. The mana regeneration. It grants isn't worth it at all unless you have a ton of plus 2 skills and a big mana pool, which you won't have until it's in the late game. Allow me to explain. Say you have 120 mana. It takes 2 minutes or 120 seconds to fully replenish your mana pool if you do nothing. This is the same for every character. This will mean you are regenerating 1 mana per second. At level 1, Warmth adds 30% mana regeneration, meaning that you now generate 1.3 mana per second. The second level gets you 1.42 mana per second, etc, etc. However, a level 1 sorceress starts with 35 mana, which will still regenerate in 120 seconds, meaning you are regenerating about a third of a mana point per second. Warmth gives that a 30% boost, meaning it gets you to roughly half a mana per second regenerated. Doesn't sound worth it to me at all, unless you specifically want it for the synergy it provides. Better things to do for getting more mana and faster mana regeneration up putting points into energy, sapphires in your gear, tear runes or just chugging mana pots. If you still don't want to put points into it, you can also just respec your sorceress at level 18. I however decided to just go ahead and put points into warmth, cause I do dumb things so you don't have to. In the underground passage I reach level 6, which means I get access to inferno, a prerequisite for blaze, and I don't know if this is any good, so let's try it. Yup, that will do. I will get to level 12 with that. Inferno's damage is quite high, allowing me to play on players 8 until I hit level 12. The only thing I need to be careful of is getting into hit recovery, cause it means the inferno stops. A small shield drops from a chest. This is Clayglaw's Claw. Its 75 poison length reduction makes it perfect for the Ontario fight, and absolutely nothing else past that. But hey, we found it in Act 1, so we get to use it in the Ontario fight. One nice thing about Inferno is that you can lure enemies to a door and then line them up properly for a good roasting. The Countess is always fire enchanted than normal. It isn't too big of a deal to take her down, because as usual we need a bunch of runes. For this run we need a tear and a rail rune to form a leaf rune word, and a tal and an ad for a stealth. A boss pack of archers gets me to level 12, meaning that it is time to put points into blaze. So what does blaze do anyway? Well it leaves a path of fire where you walked. It also boosts your run walk speed, which makes this build feel as the combination of a frenzy barbarian and a firewall sorceress. And if you think that sounds pretty sweet, you would be correct, cause it is. You can now just run around and things will die in your way. On my next counters run I learn about the downsides of blaze. When you can't run, you can't deal damage, so after entering the door to level 5 I'm just kind of stuck until I manage to wriggle my character around and am able to start dealing damage. Luckily fallens run away all the time, cause if those were death lords or something, the run would be over. The countess ends up dropping an ad rune on this run, which means that it is time to make my stealth. It's 25% faster run walk is actually a pretty big buff to this build, cause when you're running around faster you just make a bigger fire. Dealing with slow enemies that chase you is laughably easy with this build. I mean just look at the smith running around through my blaze of glory. I go ahead and circle the area surrounding him a few times as well, cause the fire damage from blaze does stack the way you want it to, so getting 2 or even 3 layers of blaze going will greatly improve your damage. For the Ontario fight I kind of did an oopsie and forgot to put the players count back to 1. Luckily Ontario is made out of pure chlorine trifluoride and even on players 8 she just dies in seconds to the fire damage. Whilst checking Akara, I end up finding a plus one blaze 2 socket staff, which I'm going to use as my leaf base for normal. And in act 2 I realized something extremely important. You can use the blaze fire to draw pictures. I decided right then and there that I would never meme with them, cause I'm not like that at all. I would never. 
My tear rune was in my other staff, so for now I have to settle on just a normal leaf, which is still a massive upgrade with its plus 3 to skills. The other mods are nice as well, but this is all about the plus 3 to the skills. I always wait with my imbue, cause when you imbue at level 19 or higher, you can start rolling 20 faster run walk boots, which usually is just a quality of life thing, but this time it's also just a big damage boost, cause once again, more run walk means more fire, means more damage. I get unlucky and don't get it. Oh well, at least they have a chance to proc Frost Nova and some Lightning Resist. To do the Maggot Lair with Blaze, you will need to learn how to lure monsters back though, cause you can't attack forwards at all. So what you end up doing is running forward, take one or two hits and then run back, pull the monsters into your fire and they will go down in a blaze. Chalan the mercenary can clear things that aren't following me into the fire. And all in all, I end up picking the Staff of Kings pretty easily, which is a relief cause I expected it to be horrible with the whole no attacking forward thing going on. With that it is time for some strategic line placement. What you want to do is make circles to have things follow you around while stacking damage. You can do that by either making a couple of small circles or if a lot of things are following you, you can make a bigger circle. In the arcane sanctuary, things just fly and walk into your blaze, so you can just kind of walk around through them and not bother with any of it. Which means it is time for the Duriel fight. So what you want to do here is let your mercenary die. I know, it sounds scary, but trust me, the mercenary is keeping Duriel in his place, meaning he isn't running through your fire. Once your mercenary has exited the fight, Duriel will start to follow you. However, thanks to the boost in your run walk speed from Blaze, you should be able to outrun him until he goes and dies. He ends up dropping me the sickest rare ring. Seriously, this thing might be the best thing I have ever seen him drop. 25 cold resist, 24 lightning resist, 30 fire resist and even a bit of magic find. This ring is better than almost anything I have even in my shared stash. Seriously, what a beauty. In Act 3, I had trouble finding the monsters that dropped the kid bin, but that was because he had already died before even making it onto my screen. The ring from Ormus isn't horrible or anything, but just looks pretty sad compared to the craziness Juriel just dropped. I get lucky on the council fight. All of them are inside the building, so I go and fill that path with fire. I end up not even seeing most of them, cause they are dying off screen. In the Durance of Hate, a council member drops me a Berserker's helmet, which grants 35 fire resist. Why he wasn't wearing it himself while walking into the blaze we will never know. Mephisto tends to walk around a lot, so I make sure that everything is on fire while he is moving around. It takes a couple of seconds, but down he goes. His drops are so close yet so far away. The light gauntlets he dropped have 20 fire resist, but the unique version of those would have been Mage Fist, which would have been the literal best in slot items for this build. The souls in the planes of despair tend to move around a lot, meaning they will willingly walk into the fire with all the usual results of doing such a thing. Ejual is a slow enemy that tries to follow you, so as long as you stay out of range for his Frost Nova, it is a free fight. And a faster is as well. It's honestly kind of game breaking to be able to attack and run at the same time in this game. A lot of the monsters just become kind of irrelevant. The Hellforge ends up dropping me a Nefrune. In the Chaos Sanctuary, the Grand Vizier of Chaos is always fire immune. Luckily, he isn't very tanky. Because the enemies aren't moving, they aren't taking any blaze damage, so after Chalan goes down, they start coming for me and light up like a Christmas tree. With all of the minions gone, I go ahead and give Chalan another attempt at the Grand Vizier, and this time he wins his fight. Lord the size isn't quite keen on walking everywhere either, but he does move when you get close to him. So I surround him with fire, walk up to him to force him to walk somewhere else, and down he goes. To start off the Diablo fight, I go ahead and spam as many layers of blaze as I can on his spawning point. Typically enough, after killing Salan, he ends up standing in the only place in the pentagram that isn't on fire, so I have to go in and lure him out. After luring him out, he starts running around everywhere trying to chase me, but the fire damage ends up too much for him.
He ends up dropping me Hasaru's boots. A great find for that 20 faster run walk and the 25 fire resist. The war spear he dropped is an impaler. It has 20 increased attack speed, a bunch of enhanced damage, ignore target's defense, 40% open wounds and prevent monster heal. I'm gonna ignore the plus 2 skills on it cause impale zones don't exist and I totally haven't failed like 4 of them already. The level requirement is a bit high but next up is farming Eldritch which can easily be done up to level 32. The weapon requires level 31. One, but your mercenary is always one level lower than you are, so you need to farm up to level 32 for him to use the impaler. In the bloody foothills, Shanks monsters prove once again that running into a literal blazing wall of fire isn't the smartest thing to do. And after killing Shank, I get the hell out of dodge as quickly as I can, because blaze makes the game lag quite a bit. And the death of Shank has sent many a computer to its grave. The Eldritch farm happened, and at level 32, I went ahead and hired Hazard, gave him the impaler, and went to save the barbarian. Barbarians. However, this turns out to be a big ask. Blaze can't hit the doors on their prisons. Luckily, Hazard ends up opening the door for me, proving that chivalry isn't dead. I once again have to rely on his door opening services for the well door. I tried opening it myself, but the game just goes kind of crazy when you attempt it. The next prison door I just decide to melee, cause Hazard is out there fighting some demons. A soul rune drops in the glacial trail. I end up combining that soul rune with an art rune that I got as a reward from saving the barbarians to make a lore rune word. This rune word nets you plus 1 to skills, 7 damage reduction and 30 lightning resist which is pretty good for just a soul rune. The ancients are 3 big burly men trying to get close to attack me. So yeah, not much of a fight here, they just run into the fire a bunch and die. After maxing blaze I started to spec into fire mastery as well, cause the bonus it gives you is much bigger than what you can get from the warmth synergy. The bale waves are easily taken care of, I just run around in front of bale, making all of the enemies spawn in a burning ring of fire and they go down 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 as the flames go higher. Bale is another one of those enemies that just doesn't walk around too much, he's probably just jealous cause he specked out of blaze after meeting marius and now realizes how cool it actually looks, despite him not walking he does teleport around, so you kind of just need to get lucky and have him teleport into a place where you have a fire going. Once he does, the fight is easy. He ends up dropping a unique bone wand, which is Graven Spine. This is an item that exists in the game. Unfortunately, you can shop better wands at Drognan in normal, so the point of this one kind of escapes me. I go ahead and make Corpse Fire's name come true by lighting him and his friends on fire, only to find out that one of the monsters in the den has escaped me, having to run around the entire den of evil for the final monster is a tradition that will never be fun. Hazard has his work cut out for him with the countess, cause she can be fire immune in nightmare. The drops start off poorly with the iconic no rune drop, oh well at least she dropped a key. To combine with my spirit, I plan on wearing an ancient's pledge, which is Rel Ort and Tal. I have the runes already, so I go ahead and make the rune word. After killing her a few more times, I can cube up 3 it to a Tal, meaning I only need one more M rune, which I end up finding just a couple of runs later. At this point, I have the runes but don't have a base for spirit yet. I don't feel like I need to force the issue just yet, so for now, I move along and go wave goodbye to the smith again. During all of this I am killing boss packs for experience, so when I encounter a boss pack in the jail level 2, I obviously go for it. They however disagree, I decide that they might have a point, turn around and leave them alone. I encounter their friends in the catacombs and here I get a first look at what happens when you deal a lot of fire damage to a lightning enchanted monster. Those are some insanely dense balls. If anyone else goes for this run, all I can say is be careful cause stuff like that will end your run. Antariol is going to be a very easy fight, so I decide to go ahead and create my Scalders for some extra magic find. I follow it up by gambling a belt with some life and poison resist and a pair of boots with 27 magic find. This gets me to 109 magic find, which ends up paying off before I even get to Antariol as a spider drops me a unique petrified wand. And even though I am not a necromancer, I decide that 50 life on a weapon is too much to skip, so I go ahead and equip it as a temporary thing until I get my spirit. Despite wearing my magic finding gear, the Antariol fight is laughably easy again. 
The maggot layer is much of the same as it was in normal. If things follow you into your place, they very easily stop existing. If they don't, Hazard will take care of them, which, despite being slow, is very consistent. I also picked up a white shark skin belt that I decided to imbue, however I don't get anything good on the imbue. In the arcane sanctuary, the worst case scenario happens. I hop into a teleporter, but end up being surrounded and locked in by hell clan goats. I can't move, so I can't deal damage. Hazard will need to make the first kill. It gets pretty close, but once he hits his kill, I manage to wiggle around a bit and get a blaze going, allowing me to deal with the enemies and escape. While waiting on Duriel to get the door open after ringing it, I decide to do some creative artwork. I don't see a reason to change a winning plan, so I wait for the mercenary to stop being there and start running around with Duriel chasing me through the blaze until he drops dead. He is once again feeling generous, this time dropping me a unique blade, which is the Spectral Shard. This weapon has an amazing 50% faster cast rate, giving it niche uses over even the mighty spirit. The set hunter's guise is an elder's stony gaze, which has a chance to roll 40 to 50 cold resist, so this one is a bit above average in 47. It also has two sockets. The jungle's inhabitants are pretty pissed and end up trying to kill me over how I'm lighting a huge fire in their forest. Honestly, I can't say I blame them. The rest of the jungle is basically a lemming scenario, where I just put up a wall of damage and the enemy run themselves into it. The ring almost gives me is a ring only a mother could love, so I give it right back. I still don't like changing a winning plan, so I do the exact same strategy as in normal for the council. I walk up, light the door on fire and lure them out through the blaze. It works just as well as it did the first time. The dolls and the Durans aren't too bad either. When you kill them by running away from them, the only thing I need to be careful about is that it's hard to see them in the fire when they rush you, so I do end up taking a few risky hits from them. The Hellforge gets me a co-rune, which gives me the opportunity to do something hilarious and memesy. It takes a few runs, but the Countess drops me my shield rune, meaning I get to make me a hustle. Hustle is basically a spiced up version of stealth. It has 10 resist all, some plus 2 evade and some other stats we won't be using. The big thing on this is that it has 65 faster run walk, meaning we get to blaze faster. I use my newfound speed to go to the cairn stones in normal, cause at this point I'm out of patience and just want my spirit base. However, Tristram is closed for business today, turns out I never saved Kane. So one quick pee break at an old tree later I go ahead and open up the Tristram portal. I go ahead and save Kane and follow it up by grabbing words lag. And I'm guessing a lot of people are wondering why am I going back to normal cows? Like what are you doing man? You're almost at nightmare cows. I know but I need to be at normal cows because items in Diablo have item levels. The amount of sockets they get from Lazak is dependent on this item level. And it just so happens to be that swords that drop in the normal secret cow level have the correct level to get socketed to 4 sockets by Lazak. So every single sword you drop in there can be a spirit base. The cow level is a blaze sorcerer's best friend. Everything is slow has little fire resist and runs into your fire. Meaning that if you want to, you can spend a lot of time here to do and find whatever you like. I'm only here for a sword base, so once I find a crystal sword, I grab it and head to Lazuk to put some sockets in it. My spirit rolls with 31 faster cast rate, but it doesn't really matter. I'm mostly just using blaze anyway for this run. The important part here is the plus 2 to skills and the 22 vitality, but I'm not gonna complain about 55 faster hit recovery either. With my new gear, I go and make my way to the chaos sanctuary. However, there is a problem. Every single doom knight in there is fire immune, and from here on out I will encounter a ton of fire immunes, so I need to go and spec into a second skill. I want it to be a skill that works well with blaze, and I decide to go for frozen orb. The orb does enough damage without synergies and works well with position based play. If you hit something exactly in the middle with a frozen orb, you deal way more damage to it, so you want to be running around a lot when using it, which is exactly what blaze wants to do as well. The two also complement each other because the frozen orb makes the enemy slower, which means they will walk in your fire longer, causing them to take more damage. The final big thing I thought about is that frozen orb works best against targets that are standing still. I couldn't think of a better setup with blaze, so I specced into it. 
stat wise I went strength for gear and the rest into vitality. It ends up working exactly as I had hoped. The frozen orb deals enough damage to deal with the fire immune doom knight and I get to make my way into the chaos sanctuary. Frozen orb has no problem clearing out the sanctuary, so I make it to the infector of souls without a problem. One little trick you can do here with blaze is to stack a few instances of it on where they will spawn. They will just stand still in the fire as long as you don't lure them away, making for some very easy kills. The same trick works on Diablo, I stack the fire densely and when he walks out I lure him over the blaze and throw orbs at him. In Act 5 I deal with Shank and save Anya before heading back to Act 2. And if you're wondering why I have to go back to Act 2, it's because I had skipped the Radamond quest because the burning undead mages are all immune to fire. So coming back here with a second skill is just so much nicer. Radamond also isn't a very walkative monster, so having something that can directly aim at him is also a lifesaver. Lucky for me, he decides to walk a few steps and immediately gets burned to a crisp. The Ancients fight is much of the same with them following me through my blade while I run away from them until they give me my experience. The list of fight is essentially the same, they are slow and not immune to fire while chasing you, or what is called in the blazeness a free fight. I get lucky and bail teleports into the fire. I complement that by throwing frozen orbs at him until he stops being melodramatic and starts dropping items. Somewhere along the way I picked up a magic ring that turns out to be an 11 to resist all ring, which is a good start to the hell preparation. At this point in the run, Hasarus can get easily outclassed, so I decide to go for some gambling at Anya, netting me 34 lightning resist, 31 magic find boots. I also end up buying a 73 life belt, and cause I'm just Level 56 I go ahead and dive into some terror zones where I get jump scared in the disused vein. The secret cow level terror zone is the best one for this build, cause as I explained earlier everything just runs into your fire. And in the area plateau terror zone, Trash Socket ends up dropping me the Sonder's heavy boots. These have 40% faster run walk and nothing else I care about but speed. So yeah the good boots come off and we go for speed. In the catacombs level 2 I can definitely tell my resists aren't very good. On level 4 I have to work around Moldrul who is immune to fire and cold damage. I end up running around and kiting with Mr. Drool chasing me throughout everything. I'm just very happy that these are night of the living dead zombies and not dawn of the dead zombies. With everything cleared, I finally get to dump Moldrul in the corner and get rid of him. The anti fight is the same as in normal and nightmare and cause I am basically running at the speed of light, she doesn't stand a chance of catching me. She would need to lock me up to catch me, which no boss can do ever at all ever ever. In the Claw Viper Temple I end up finding a Monarch base, in which I am going to make a spirit after clearing the rest of the temple and grabbing the usual Act 2 groceries. Fangskin ends up almost getting me, but dies in my fire just before reaching me. The Mega Lair goes nicely, with the monsters running into my fire just like in normal and nightmare, so without any further problems I go ahead and grab the Staff of King, which I follow up with a visit to Lazak to soccer the Monarch I just found. He goes ahead and gives it 4 sockets, which means I can put a spirit in there. The spirit ends up rolling 33% faster cast rate, which is cute but doesn't really matter for Blaze, I'm going to wear it for the plus 2 to skills. I do require a respec to do so, so I go ahead and visit Akara as well. Stat wise I'm going 156 strength for the monarch and the rest into vitality. Skill wise I do the same as I already had going on, I spec into frozen orb and a bit into cold mastery and the rest of my points go into Blaze, its synergies and the fire mastery. Even though I am now full Sonic, I almost get myself killed in the palace cellar. The arcane sanctuary goes the same as the maggot lair, I run forward until I find monsters then run back while they chase me into the fire. Gold immunes that stand still turn out to be a big problem, but luckily Hazard can deal with those. Talrasha's tomb starts off with a fire and cold immune boss pack, so I use my lead map reading skills to determine that Duriel surely is the other way. The other way teaches me that when one door opens I get punched in the face. 
there is yet another fire and cold immune, so I go ahead and run away from that pack as well. I mean, use my lead map finding skills to determine that the map is somewhere else. In a bout of what is of course nothing but the purest of map reading skills and not me getting lucky at all, Turiel does end up being somewhere far away from the fire cold immune boss packs. Killing him is easy, his holy freeze aura slows me down, but even in his wildest dreams he can't catch up to me, as long as I run around in a big enough circle, which can be sad for the spiders in the spider cavern. Even with blaze going I am barely able to outrun them. After barely making it out there is no way I am diving into that town portal again. So I go ahead, light the entire forest on fire by running through it and snipe the spiders from a corner. Cezark ends up dropping me a unique hero fund trophy, which is the homunculus. The homunculus is the epitome of cool. With its plus 2 to curses and plus 2 necromancer skills, the chance to block on it is insane and to top it all off it has a whopping 40 resist all and helps out with the mana situation a lot as well, with its 20 energy, 33 mana regeneration and plus 5 to mana after each kill. Seriously I love this thing, it's so cool. What's not cool is the great marsh, mostly because it looks like someone tossed a cigarette on the ground and no one bothered to stomp it out, but to be fair the great marsh kind of deserves it for being the the worst area in the game. It's filled with gloams, their lightning damage hurts like a truck but they aren't very smart, meaning they just fly into the fire and get what they deserve. One little tip for kiting around them, if you get a map with a tree on it filled with souls you can actually use the tree to block that lightning, after that you can just shoot at them and run back to the cover. After I don't even know how many souls, finding the flayer jungle is always such a relief. To celebrate my arrival, one of the flayers drops me a unique tollwar. This is the blade of Alibaba. None of the mods on it matter except for the gold find and the magic find. Especially the crazy amount of gold find makes it an amazing sword to have on the switch of a Hawking Barbarian, allowing for crazy piles of gold to drop everywhere. Flavor wise this thing is amazing as well, making Alibaba's sword the one that gets you gold and rare jewelry is just chef's kiss peak design. In the flayer dungeon the game gives me a subtle reminder that my cold resist might not be quite up to snuff. It also tries and remind me that dolls exist but they just run into the fire so no worries there. It's so nice to play a build that doesn't have to worry about dolls for a change. In the sewers level 1 I get brick walled by a pack of unravelers and their supporting crew. They don't move, so I can't get them into the blaze, and they keep reviving their minions so fast that I'm just not getting through them. I headbutt into this wall of monsters for a while, but realize I don't have to be an idiot all the time and can just run around them. The council can't catch up with me for the life of them, which means they are basically free as well. The lightning immunes just walk into the fire, and the fire immunes I can just guide around and orb without any real pushback from their side. In the durans I get reminded about my hubris when a doll explodes right beside me. This close call ends up reminding me that thinking dolls are free is just a death wish in disguise. The Mephisto fight is much of the same as in Normal and Nightmare. Let Hazard take a dive and guide Mephisto around through your fire while his life total ticks down. I do have to be very careful about his icy balls and lightning. The biggest downside to Blaze is that it makes it very hard to see the attacks that you need to dodge. Which is kind of ironic, you have all the speed in the world to dodge, but can't see a thing, so you still have trouble dodging. Also yes, I have the Blade of Alibaba equipped instead of the Spirit. I couldn't resist the nostalgia of barely surviving a Mephisto fight while packing on way more magic find than I reasonably should. It wasn't worth it though, he drops nothing. At this point we all know the drill, my two skill points walk into the fire and die. I almost follow his example by running into the river of flame and getting shot by some mages. Yeah guys, not gonna lie, my resistances are not great and my life total is low. At this point I should probably go and level, farm some gear, replace the Sanders boots and the hustle and be slow, safe and steady. But that's boring, so I move on. On. A fast toad turns out to be fire immune, but Hazard, with a full rejuvenation IVF, can tank him while I frozen up the armorer to his death. The Hellforge nets me an ist rune. I could put this in the Alibaba for even more magic fun, but I have to accept that running around in the Chaos Sanctuary with an Alibaba magic finding setup is probably not the greatest of choices I could make. The Oblivion Knights in the Chaos Sanctuary turn out to be a massive pain. They stand still and shoot, which I would usually solve by just throwing frozen orbs, 
However, they are also cold immune. What I end up needing to do is just surround them with fire and hope they just randomly start walking into it. It's not much of a plan, but it's the best I got. As you can tell from the footage of how this is going, this is a pretty crappy way to get through the Chaos Sanctuary. And I'm sure you can imagine how this ended up taking forever. So imagine my sadness when I walk into the main area of the sanctuary and the literal first thing I encounter is a fire and cold immune oblivion knight. Seriously, this game is just so mean sometimes. I managed to lure this guy away from the main part and can continue on making my way through. Surely the hardest part is done now right? My day is ruined when I walk to the right and the first thing I encounter are might fanaticism venom lords. The best way to deal with something like this is to follow them into the pentagram in the middle of the area. They can only enter that one at a time, which gives me ample time to deal enough damage to them. The final part of clearing the central area of the chaos sanctuary is to get rid of all the oblivion knights. Just like with the first one, I make sure none of them can walk without hitting the fire and then force them to walk through it. Effective? Yes. Tedious? Oh god yes, also yes. With the main area clear, it is time to start working my way towards Hell's Bells. On my way to the decise button, I find another fire called immune. Luckily, this one doesn't run away, so Hazard can have a nice little one-on-one -on -one with him while I go and grab some popcorn. Same goes for Lord Decide, who also spawned Fire and Cold Immune. The game is just in a foul mood tonight. And because of the game's bad mood, Hazard is really earning his paycheck. The Diablo fight starts off with the usual strategy of surrounding the demon with fire and then kiting him around to make sure that he actually walks into the fire. It takes a couple of runarounds, but the demon ends up taking the bait and starts walking. Once he has left the pentagram, he almost stops completely. I fear he has seen through my plan. So I keep my distance and force him to walk to me. And that is when disaster struck. The demon has seen through my plan of running around and took his moment to put a bone prison around me. I'm stepsister stuck and before I even fully realize what just happened, the demon shows no mercy and kills me. 